The 1962 Cuban Missile Dealings are a perfect example of the Russian school of negotiation. In this case, establishing an appropriate power relationship, employing as needed duplicity. During crisis dealings, this strategy leads directly to the desired agreement. And the better the balance of power is, the quicker the negotiations are. Thanks to the CUBE method, the analysis of this Cuban missile negotiation demonstrates why, in only six days, Khrushchev succeeds at the most extreme moment of the Cold War to make the United States accept the unacceptable. Let us remember. In May 61, Fidel Castro, a revolutionary answerable only to himself, suddenly converts to communism. His political conversion occurs immediately after the Bay of Pigs fiasco, a military operation initiated by Eisenhower and taken up again by Kennedy. The Russians are now able to take root on the American continent. To do so, Khrushchev first begins negotiating with his new comrade Castro. By the end of 61, Khrushchev finally obtains the desired agreement. The Russians will be authorized to install nuclear missiles in Cuba. In the spring of 62, Khrushchev thus launches the secret operation Anadir, which leads to the most important negotiation of the 20th century. At the same time, Kennedy in a strictly opposite frame of mind, he is more than ever convinced of the necessity to overthrow the Cuban regime. In fact, Castro has now transformed his protesting regime into a communist one. The big red dog had just entered an American garden. Castro has gone too far. In the beginning of 62, Kennedy thus initiates a new secret operation called Mongoose Operation, planning once again to overthrow in autumn the Cuban regime. On October the 16th of 62, after having been methodically tricked by the Russians, lying to him straight in the eyes, Kennedy discovers the presence of the missiles. This particular morning, Kennedy's reality has become dreadful. His stakes are 80 million American lives, dependent upon the sole decision of a mortal enemy, capable of striking in less than 10 minutes. Neutralizing these missiles becomes the imperative necessity. Naturally, Kennedy wishes to avoid a nuclear conflict. He is thus going to try to negotiate the withdrawal of the missiles. This is exactly what Khrushchev wanted. During seven days, Kennedy prepares meticulously, still without the Russians knowing. His team recommends the quarantine of Cuba as the first level of retaliation. On Monday, the 22nd of October, Kennedy alerts the world of the seriousness of the situation. Indeed, the Russian pressure on him is phenomenal, and his adversary is now perfectly aware of the pressure felt by Kennedy. On the other hand, Kennedy's own pressure on the Russian is very slight. The power relationship with Khrushchev has now begun. On the Russian side, in this chronicle of an unavoidable crisis, Nikita Khrushchev has been preparing for a long time, at least 10 months, to lead these negotiations. In this dangerous chess game, Khrushchev must exchange the withdrawal of the missiles for the acceptance by the United States of the first communist regime in America. It is obviously a great achievement, obtained, if I might say, dangerously but peacefully. The negotiation is wrapped up in six days, including seven exchanges of letters and two meetings between diplomats. The two K never spoke directly to each other. 
tactically the Russians were caught short three times. By the early discovery of the missiles, by the meticulous American preparation, and by the inopportune destruction of a reconnaissance plane, thereby accelerating the end of the bargainings. But the Russian strategy was faultless and functioned perfectly. Fortunately, during this crisis, John Kennedy demonstrated great tactical talents, preparation, steady nerves, and astute calculations. But the Russian, Nikita Khrushchev, was the memorable strategist.